Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to the Friday Night Smackdown review. And Smackdown tonight, of course, was from the Performance Center in Orlando. And this was Smackdown's go-home show uh, for Backlash, which is happening this Sunday. And I gotta say, tonight's Smackdown, I thought it was an okay show, in my opinion. And I have to say it was an okay show because of one match tonight. And that was AJ Styles versus Daniel Bryan to crown a new Intercontinental Champion. This match, in my opinion, was an instant classic. This was one of the best matches of the year. So they both uh, delivered uh, in the match, both Styles and uh, Daniel Bryan. Everything else that happened on the show was just there, in my opinion. It was just there. So overall, it was an okay show tonight. So let's get started with the review. So SmackDown opened up tonight with Renee Young. Renee Young was in the ring, and this was uh, Jeff Hardy and Sheamus coming out. Uh, apparently, uh, WWE management uh, requested that uh, both Jeff Hardy and Sheamus sign a contract to make their match official uh, for Backlash. So Renee Young ended up introducing Sheamus. Sheamus came out. He came to the ring uh, along with a uh, guy, a doctor, in a lab coat. And also four men came out. Uh, dressed as security, and they were shown carrying a, I think it was like a, a large like shield with them. So Renee Young ended up introducing Jeff Hardy uh, next, and Jeff Hardy ended up coming out. So Renee ends up saying, you know, what is this all about? And Seamus says he doesn't want to embarrass the lady. So Jeff Hardy uh, wasn't worried uh, what this was about. And Jeff Hardy ended up uh, cussing Sheamus of being behind the hit and run between you know, Jeff Hardy and Elias. Jeff Hardy ended up mentioning that backlash. Nothing will be able to save Sheamus, even his security. And Sheamus ended up saying that he wants a little assurance going into Backlash. He ended up saying that he had his lawyer make it to where Jeff Hardy has to take a urine test before he signs the contract. And pretty much basically what this was, was Bruce Pritchard had in mind, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, Bruce Pritchard now is both running Friday Night SmackDown and Monday Night Raw, Paul Heyman, is out of uh, the creative for Monday Night Raw, which is, which fucking sucks. So yeah, Bruce Pritchard is going to make both shows suck every single week. Terrible. Absolutely fucking terrible. And this whole urine test thing uh, with Jeff Hardy here, Bruce Pritchard had in mind, he's like, oh, I got an idea. Why don't we take this same storyline that happened in 2006, where it was between Shawn Michaels and Vince McMahon, where uh, Shawn Michaels had to take a urine test. He actually uh, did take the urine test, and after it, he threw the he threw the urine at Vince McMahon, and that's basically what Bruce Prichard is doing here with Jeff Hardy. Yay! Some originality, Bruce. Sorry about that, but I was saying, you know, some some originality, Bruce, where you have to take a storyline that we saw back in 2006 and do it here in 2020. So, basically, like I said, Jeff Hardy had to take a urine test, and Seamus ended up believing that Jeff Hardy will fail the test. And he ended up saying that if Jeff Hardy does, the backlash match is off. He ended up saying because there's no chance 
he's stepping in the ring with a junkie. So once again, Sheamus ends up calling Jeff Hardy a junkie. So Jeff Hardy ended up saying that he is an alcoholic. And if this is what he has to do to get to Sheamus, he ended up saying, fine. He ended up saying that he's been battling alcohol and addiction and addiction since his early 20s. And he ended up saying that he's tired of fighting. So Jeff Hardy ended up saying that he goes to meetings each week, talks about how he's let everyone down. He ended up saying that he's sick and tired of being sick and tired. And his demons are starving. And he ended up saying sometimes all it takes is to want to feed them is being in the presence of a bastard like Seamus. And he ended up saying that he's going to be a beacon of light for everyone else who experiences something like this. So Jeff Hardy ended up going on about what he's going to do to Seamus. And Seamus ended up saying that his doctor will be able to speed up the test. And that he will pay for the test on his own. Because usually, you know, with urine tests, it usually takes 24 hours to get the results. And Seamus ended up saying that his doctor is even overseeing the tests. So then Seamus ended up asking Renee to leave the ring because, you know, Jeff Hardy was experiencing uh, performance issues. So Jeff Hardy ends up stepping inside of the, the curtain or shield that Seamus bought out. The uh, lab doctor ends up stepping in with him. And you know, Jeff Hardy was you know, urinating in uh, the cup. Seamus was just uh, knocking Jeff Hardy. So Jeff Hardy completes the urine test. He steps back out, got a glass full of urine in it. Well, <laughs> you know, it wasn't urine, it, was apple. it looked like apple juice. So Seamus ended up joking that uh, Hardy uh, had fun at happy hour because the glass was, you know, like almost uh, half full. So Seamus ended up uh, continuing to taunt Jeff Hardy. Uh, the doctor, the lab doctor was testing uh, the urine. So Jeff Hardy ends up grabbing uh, the urine. And he throws it into Seamus' face. <laughs> and Seamus was just like all like uh, disgusted. And, you know, he was grossed out. <laughs> so uh, Jeff ended up exiting the ring. And Seamus was furious. And Seamus ends up flipping the contract uh, signing table over. And, you know, the NXT uh, stars and upcoming talents in the crowd were chanting to Seamus that he got pissed on. And so, basically, that was that. But, overall, this whole thing was terrible. This was absolutely fucking terrible. God-awful. Same, same thing, like I said before, that they did back in 2006 with Shawn Michaels and... Uh, Vince McMahon. Th th that's what it was. If you want to see, if you want to see it better, go watch Shawn Michaels and Vince McMahon from 2006 when they did that. Same shit. So then, when SmackDown came back from the commercial, uh, we saw Sheamus was in the bathroom. He's washing his face. He was rinsing his mouth out. He was gar he was gargling. So his the lab doctor ends up coming in, and he informs Seamus that the uh, urine test for Jeff Hardy came back negative. So Seamus throws another fit in the bathroom, and that was basically that. So where? Going to be possibly getting the match at Backlash. Um, 
And then we had the New Day versus Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. And the match itself, you know, it was an okay match. You know, it was back and forth between uh, these guys. Uh, you had uh, Big E and Kofi Kingston uh, before the match got on the way. They were taking a knee and they were kneeling in the middle of the ring, raising their fists in the air. I guess because of the whole uh, you know, protests that are happening. And then came out Cesaro and Nakamura. So the match got on the way. Cesaro ended up starting off uh, with Kofi Kingston. They were trading holds uh, in the middle of the ring. Cesaro ended up hitting a tilt the world backbreaker on Kofi. Nakamura ended up coming in. Kofi Kingston ended up, ended up sending Nakamura to the floor. And Big E ended up coming back in, launched Kofi out onto Nakamura. Big E ended up running uh, Cesaro over with a clothesline. And at the end of the match, you had uh, Nakamura ends up uh, climbing up to the top. Kofi ends up uh, knocking uh, Nakamura on the uh, the canvas on the mat. Kofi comes in with a cross body uh, from the top. Nakamura end up getting his knees up. Nakamura end up uh, covering Kofi. And there you go. Nakamura and Cesaro end up win the match. Overall, okay match. Wasn't a bad match by any means. So then, after that, we had Tucker and Otis. Oh, finally, Tucker is shown again on TV. Finally, Bruce remembered to put Tucker there along with Otis. What a surprise. So, Bruce, now can we get Bianca Belair on Monday Night Raw? Can we get Mustafa Ali back on SmackDown? Now that we got Tucker back... So, Otis and Tucker were backstage. Mandy Rose ends up walking up. And she reminds Otis to take his Money in the Bank briefcase. And Tucker was trying to get uh, Otis to, uh, to focus. Because uh, they were taking on... Uh, they were taking on The Miz and uh, John Morrison later on. Uh, it was, you know, Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman was tagging with uh, Heavy Machinery with uh, Tucker and Otis uh, to take on uh, The Miz and John Morrison. So then we saw Jeff Hardy and Sheamus. They were brawling next to uh, Tucker, Otis, and Mandy Rose. And, you know, they were brawling. Referees end up uh, trying to separate them. Sheamus was uh, pounding on uh, Jeff Hardy. And then it went to commercial. So that was basically that. And then we had a little uh, video package uh, talking about the, uh, the history of uh, the Enzo Continental Championship. The video package was uh, narrated by Corey Graves. And, you know, it was a very well put together video package of uh, the Intercontinental Championship, of the history of it. Really uh, liked it. And then we get to Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles to crown a new Intercontinental Champion. This match was one of the best matches of the year. This was a instant classic, in my opinion. Just both Daniel Bryan and Styles, just they delivered in this match. And the commercials here, yeah, it was kind of annoying when uh, it went to commercial. We actually had four commercial breaks during this match. Four. And I'm like... You know, it's good that it's 
fine that we got the match on SmackDown tonight, but this should have been kept until Backlash. They should WWE should have just waited till Backlash so that we could get uh, the end into uh, you know to this in this tournament with Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles. So, but like I said, this was one of the best matches of the year so far. So the match started. Daniel Bryan and Styles end up locking up. Daniel Bryan took control. And Styles end up dropping Daniel Bryan into the turnbuckle uh, in the corner. And Styles was then hung up on the second rope. Daniel Bryan ended up sending him out to the floor. Nailed him with a suicide dive. And Daniel Bryan ended up uh, driving uh, knees into Styles. And... Daniel Bryan ended up keeping him down in a submission in the middle of the ring. And Styles ended up nailing a uh, drop kick on Daniel Bryan. And Styles then worked on uh, Bryan here with uh, chops. We sent Daniel Bryan into the corner. Bryan, Daniel Bryan ended up fighting back. Uppercutted Styles into the corner. Daniel Bryan then uh, took control. Uh, of the match again. Uh, Styles ended up countering, worked on uh, Daniel Bryan's arm. Daniel Bryan then delivered a knee to uh, the gut of uh, Styles. Daniel Bryan then locked in a uh, leg submission on Styles. And we had a lot of, uh, got a lot of uh, pin attempts uh, from both of them. You know, near falls after near falls. Daniel Bryan then end up uppercutting Styles uh, into the corner, and loaded with some kicks. And at the end of the match, you had uh, Styles uh, end up uh, delivering the uh, Styles Clash to Daniel Bryan, and Styles uh, wasn't able to. Uh, crawl over and get the pin on Daniel Bryan. So we had Styles get back up on his feet and he springboards from the ring apron and nails the phenomenal forearm on Daniel Bryan. And then he went for the pin. There you go. Styles wins the match and he is the new Intercontinental Champion, which before going into this match, my prediction was, you know, Styles was going to win it. You know, I think WWE has more uh, more likened to Styles holding the title. I mean, Styles and Daniel Bryan, they're both really good. You know, one of these guys could have won the title. You know, Styles, you know, seeing being the new Intercontinental Champion. Daniel Bryan, I could see being a... Uh, you know, being the Intercontinental Champion. But uh, Styles was the one who came out uh, victorious and is the new Intercontinental Champion, which I'm happy about. I'm happy that Styles is the uh, Intercontinental Champion. But either one, either one of the guys, either one of these guys, I would have loved to, I would have loved to see be Intercontinental Champion. You know, whether it was Styles or whether it was... Daniel Bryan. I wouldn't have mind. They're both really good. So post-match, Renee Young ended up coming into the ring, uh, giving a interview uh, to AJ Styles. Renee ended up asking uh, Styles what it means to be Intercontinental Champion. Styles ended up saying that he said it before, and he will say it again. He is the best champion the WWE Universe has ever seen. And he, and, and he ends up saying that he is phenomenal. So we saw a referee end up uh, checking on Daniel Bryan outside of the ring. Daniel Bryan uh, was shown uh, clutching his knee. And... Styles looked like he had some trouble standing up, but you know he ended up getting back on his feet, raising the Intercontinental 
uh, title up. And that was that. But overall, this was one of the best matches of the year, in my opinion. Both Styles and Daniel Bryan delivered. You know, aside from there being four commercial breaks during this, you know, it was entertaining from beginning to end, this match. This was an instant classic. You know, I would really like to go back and you know rewatch this match because that was how that was how good this match was between the both of them. But overall, great match. And then we saw video uh, from last week with The Miz and John Morrison when they were pranking Braun Strowman when they were in that van and it you know, showed when uh, the slime uh, poured down on Caleb Braxton like we were watching Double Dare on Nickelodeon. And, you know, we saw all that, which was fucking garbage last week. This whole pranking Braun Strowman shit that we saw. So... Strowman was shown backstage. He ended up saying that the Miz and Morrison have vowed to make his life hell. He says he can fix his winch, his windshield, but they won't be able to fix themselves after he, after he destroys the both of them at Backlash, which I don't even know why this match is happening. A two-on-one handicap match and the Universal Championship is going to be on the line. Braun Strowman versus the Miz and John Morrison you know the out, what the outcome is going to be. It's this is this the whole match is pointless. Braun Strowman is going to be win the match, retain the Universal Championship. Ain't no way the Miz and Morrison are going to be co Universal Champions. When you think of it, it's fucking stupid. Why is this match even happening? I guess that will all that will be you guys' bathroom break. Sunday. So, Strowman ends up mentioning Otis possibly cashing in the Money in the Bank briefcase tonight. He ended up warning Otis and Tucker that if they try anything, he has no problem with obliterating some heavy machinery. So that was what Strowman had to say. Like I said, don't know why we're seeing a two-on-one handicap match Sunday. It's fucking pointless. The outcome, we all know what it's going to be. Strowman's going to win it, retain the title, the Universal Championship. Like I said, that will be the bathroom break on Sunday. So then we had Sasha and Bailey celebrating uh, that you know, them winning the uh, Women's Tag Team Championships. We had balloons that were set up in the ring. And we're going to see Sasha and Bayley take on Payne Royce and Billy Kay, the Iconics, versus Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross this Sunday at Backlash, where the Women's Tag Team titles are going to be on the line. And whoever wins the Women's Tag Team titles on Sunday, whether Sasha and Bayley retain, or the Iconics win it, or Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross uh, win the uh, the titles back. The winners will get to face uh, at, on NXT. They will get to face uh, Shotzi Blackheart. And sorry about that, but I was saying, you know, whether it would be Sasha or Bailey retaining the Iconics uh, winning, or even Alexa and Nikki if they win the uh, back the titles. Uh, this Sunday, whoever wins, we'll get to we'll get to challenge Shotzi Blackheart and Tegan Knox from what I heard on NXT, and that would be really awesome. But let's hope you know it could be Sasha and Bailey. Maybe they'll be retain the titles. That's my prediction. But that's pretty uh cool news. You know, forever wins, they get to face, you know, Tegan and Shotzi on NXT. Two 
uh, very talented uh, woman wrestlers down there in NXT. Likes Shotzi Blackheart. Saw her wrestle at an indie show. I think it was the Evolve show. She's really awesome in the ring. Tegan Knox, you know, I liked her since the uh, the Mae Young Classic. Very talented. She's good in the ring. That would be uh, awesome to see. But uh, this whole segment we had Sasha and Bailey coming out. The crowd uh, was chanting, you suck at them. You know, the NXT stars and upcoming talents were chanting, you suck to Sasha and Bailey. And Bailey ended up disagreeing. And she was bragging about how good she is and how untouchable she also is. She ended up saying that it can be lonely at the top. But she has Sasha, her best friend, along with her. So Sasha ended up bragging about her and Bailey's success. And she ended up saying that they will both only get stronger because they are unstoppable together. And so they were continuing to boo at them. Bailey ends up telling Sasha not to listen uh, to them. She ended up saying that she wrote a poem to tell Sasha exactly how she feels. So Bailey tried to go to read the poem. And then out came Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. And, you know, I got to give it to, a hand to Nikki Cross because there was an article that came out saying that Nikki Cross ended up ordering, you know, pizza for the, uh, NXT superstars and upcoming uh, talents there at ringside because from what I read an article, they had to bring uh, their own lunch or their own food while they're standing there for like five hours, you know, for them having to stand there for three hours when they uh, take Monday Night Raw and two hours for SmackDown. So that's five hours that they have to stand on their feet. So Nikki Cross ended up uh, ordering uh, pizza for them, you know, and that was very that was very nice of uh, Nikki Cross. You know, she's she's a great human being. And when I read that, I'm like, I love Nikki Cross even more. So that was great, what what Nikki Cross did. So I just had to mention that though. But Alexa Bliss ended up saying that it's cool that Sasha and Bailey are celebrating their win. And she ended up saying she has to draw a line at poetry. So Bailey was shown uh, throwing a fit over her moment reading the poem, you know, being ruined by uh, Bliss and uh, Nikki Cross. So Nikki Cross ended up uh, taunting Bailey and Sasha, and both her and uh, Alexa end up en- entering the ring. And the Iconics end up coming on the screen. Well, Pay Royce and Billy Kay. Pay Royce and Billy Kay had the uh, the Money Night Raw logo uh, in the background. They were taunting Sasha Bailey, uh, Bliss, and Nikki Cross. And, you know, you could tell that this was filmed probably, you know, on, probably on Monday or later in the day. So, then we saw uh, Sasha, we saw uh, Bailey and Sasha turn around and they were attacked from, they were attacked by Bliss and Nikki Cross and... They end up getting out of the ring. Bailey and Sasha uh, looked at the Iconics from uh, the screen. And pretty much that was basically that. But this whole thing was just meh, in my opinion. This was, you know, it was just, yeah. That's all I got to say. So then we had Caleb Braxton. 
Caleb Braxton was backstage with uh, The Miz and John Morrison. And they end up joking about uh, Caleb Braxton again slimed last week, which, you know, all those pranking Strowman things from last week, they were trying so hard for the audience watching at home for it to laugh, but it wasn't even funny. It was fucking terrible. The only person who found all that funny were what The Miz and Morrison did all last week to Strowman. The only person who found that all funny was probably Vince McMahon. So, but they went on, The Miz and John Morrison. They ended up sending us to their music video of the Hey, Hey, Ho, Ho, Miz and Morrison. But then the video got interrupted by Braun Strowman making his way out, which I'm like, thank you, Strowman. Thank you. Thank you for saving us. We had to see that fucking shitty ass, probably shitty ass uh, music video uh, with Miz and Morrison going, hey, hey, ho, ho, Miz and Morrison. Fucking terrible. So thank you, Strowman, for that. So then we have Braun Strowman and Heavy Machinery versus The Miz, John Morrison, and Dolph Ziggler. I forgot to mention uh, Dolph Ziggler uh, was tagging with The Miz and John Morrison. Six-man tag. So the match ended up uh, again on the way. We had Braun Strowman coming to the ring first. Then Otis and Tucker made their way out. Otis was shown carrying his... Uh, briefcase, and, when, and then SmackDown with the commercial. Then when SmackDown came back from the commercial, we got a promo for Matt Riddle. It was announced that Matt Riddle will make his debut on SmackDown next Friday night. And I'm like, okay, here we go with Matt Riddle making his debut and WWE possibly fucking him up. Get ready. It's coming, people. It's coming, guys. How long will it be when WWE makes Matt Riddle wear boots when he has a match? How long will WWE you know, put Matt Riddle in catering? Like I said, I give it three weeks. Three weeks until they give up on Matt Riddle and he's reduced to catering. That is my prediction. That is what I see them doing. So, then we went back to the ring. The Miz and John Morrison made their way out. And then Dolph Ziggler, he made his way out last. And this match was just very meh, in my opinion. Did not even care for it. Strowman ended up taunting The Miz and John Morrison out on the floor. Dolph Ziggler ended up starting off the match along with Otis. So Dolph ended up retreating over the top rope to the floor. Otis ends up taunting Dolph Ziggler. Dolph was just pacing around. And Miz was going to start. So Otis ends up bringing... Miz over the top rope and starts going starts going to work on the Miz. Otis tags and Tucker. They end up doing a, a headbutt, a double headbutt. Tucker ended up dropping another headbutt to the Miz, which sent the Miz out to the corner. Morrison ends up coming in, catches Tucker with a big kick. Morrison ended up countering a backdrop. And Tucker ended up, ended up catching Morrison in midair, slammed uh, Morrison, went for a cover. Morrison kicked out at two. And then towards uh, the middle of the match, you had uh, Corbin appear on the big screen. He was telling the cameraman to follow him and for the cameraman to keep a distance. Of course, social distancing. 
So Tucker ends up uh, stopping the suplex because he was going to deliver a suplex to Dolph Ziggler. He placed Dolph Ziggler on his shoulder. Everyone in the ring was watching Corbin. And then we see Corbin end up approaching Mandy Rose backstage. And Corbin ends up asking Mandy what happened last week with Otis and his crown. Mandy ended up telling uh, Corbin that they were just they were both just playing around. Corbin ended up saying that Mandy was really fast fantasizing about being him, about being with him. So Otis then went backstage, appeared out of nowhere. He ended up knocking Corbin down. Otis ended up starting unloading on Corbin. Officials, referees tried to uh, break it up uh, between Otis and Corbin. And then SmackDown went to commercial. Then when SmackDown came back, uh, Dolph Ziggler ends up coming in, dropped a big elbow on Tucker. And Otis was uh, not shown. He would, he didn't even come back uh, to the ring. So Strowman uh, ended up uh, trying to uh, rally for Tucker. And Dolph Ziggler was still keeping control of the match. Tucker ended up fighting back. But Dolph Ziggler ended up uh, ramming him into the corner. Miz was distracting the referee. And at the end of the match... You had Strowman uh, running wild outside the ring. And, he, you know, he was doing his shoulder tackles. You know, the, the train coming. You know, Strowman with the freight train that he does with the shoulder tackles around the ring. He was leveling Dolph Ziggler and the Miz and John Morrison. And he sent them into the plexiglass. And Otis did end up returning. And Mandy was, Mandy Rose was with him. And Dolph Ziggler was sent back into the ring. Otis ended up uh, hitting him with the caterpillar. And then he dropped the elbow. Otis went for the cover on Dolph. There you go. Braun Strowman and Heavy Machinery end up winning the match. And post-match, Mandy Rose end up uh, coming into the ring, celebrating with uh, Strowman and Otis and Tucker. Otis then kicked Dolph out of the ring. And Strowman then raised the Universal Championship in the air. And Otis then raised his Money in the Bank briefcase. And pretty much that was basically how SmackDown ended tonight. Overall, this main event was very meh, in my opinion. Yeah, so anyways, that's it for the SmackDown review tonight. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. And uh, definitely give the video a thumbs up. Comment, subscribe. And until the next video, I'll see you all later.